Man, are you ever just some days so tired? Oh, so tired. story on certain things are. As far as I know, my mother does not eat baked beans. Why are there baked beans here? Do I want these? don't they make things in different sizes for different people? And acknowledge that people are different sizes. Why has this instrument not been redesigned in like 200 years? I can reach two whole steps above an octave. So a C to an E. And an octave is like nothing. We got the iPhone mini, we got the iPhone max, we got the iPhone regular, and yet we've only got one size of piano. How far can you stretch your fingers for like an octave? And that's hard, right? Oh, very hard. So what's easy? Let's talk about how they need to make- Oh my gosh! But like the octave is nothing. They need to make pianos with different sizes. They have to How much easier it would be for kids. Yeah! Okay, I haven't actually checked to see if this already exists. At this year's Winter NAMM show, the Highland Pianos exhibit one of their uprights fitted with a DS 6.0 keyboard. What does this mean? It is estimated that around 85% of women and 25% of men have hands with a span too small to comfortably play a comprehensive repertoire. So why is the industry making life difficult for its client base? The answer, of course, is standardization, mass production, desire to keep costs down. I mean, I get that wanting to standardize a piano and keeping costs down is a big deal for these companies, but the market of people who want a smaller piano and kids and women with smaller hands, like that can't be small. So many people play the piano. There's a chipmunk right there. You see that? Yo, summer might actually be here. It is very hot in this car. <laughs> Prices going up. See, these bad boys used to cost three dollars and fifty cents, or you get two for six dollars. Now it's four dollars, man. Come on. I guess that's not as bad as some of the other places, but uh, still kind of disappointing. Um, I'd like to clarify one thing about AI, lest I sound like a complete idiot. From a creative standpoint, AI is not super interesting to me yet. I'm sure there's lots of applications for it that could be really interesting, but just like whatever the AI produces without a human there to guide it, I have no interest in that. However, when it comes to things like Siri, can you imagine actually having a Siri that is good? Or just imagine something like this website that I use for royalty-free music for these videos. There's a button where you can find songs that are similar to other songs. That is gonna get so much better so quickly. You're just gonna be able to say, I want a song that sounds like this. That is incredibly useful. The potential dangers of AI though, like it's not the AI itself in the sense of like a Skynet. It's more what it can enable people to do very easily. Imagine if like an atomic bomb was easy to make. If atomic bombs were as easy to make as like baking a cake, or even like putting a car together. Do you realize that human beings would not exist? Like the only thing that saved us is that atomic bombs are incredibly difficult to make and finding the materials for them. Anyway, technology is advancing at such a rapid pace, it is impossible to actually internalize and feel. So, uh, who knows?
So on my calendar, I have an event every six months to recharge some of my old electronics to 50% to try and keep the battery health good enough to actually still use. This is an old 2013 MacBook Pro with a broken screen. And the reason I keep this around is because some of the older songs that we've written use something called Garretton Personal Orchestra which you can only install on older versions of Mac OS. You can use them on newer versions, but you have to install it on the older versions. But also, I don't even sell stuff that much anymore. I used to sell stuff to be able to afford newer gear, but we have most of the gear we need and we can afford the other gear that we don't have yet. So if I'm gonna be keeping this stuff, I wanna be a good steward of it. And doing something simple like having a calendar event that repeats every six months, it's like such an easy thing to do. You charge it for 40 minutes, give it a little bit of juice, put it back into storage. If you ever need it, you have it. Although, it's that age old question though. Should I spend $100 to repair this screen? This is not worth $100. It might be hard to see, but there is a six foot poster of the Master Chief back here. You can see his arm right there, and up there is his head. My mom got that for me as a Christmas or birthday gift one year, and it is one of my favorite possessions, and I just realized that it's sitting here behind all of this stuff instead of being proudly displayed in my office. What am I doing? Also, this very nice poster that I got while I was in Japan. Uh, let's put this up first. <laughs> Is this the best spot for a poster? Won't it be covered by the door? Yes. I've got a little bit of room over here, but I don't want to put anything on these walls because I don't want anything in my field of view while I'm working. I just want the work in my field of view. We're serious on that side, but it's a party over here. Most of the stuff hanging up in here, you can find the story on it somewhere in the vlog. This is from Tim V, the Texan camper. It's from my cousin, Xing Chan. Well, I've suddenly lost all motivation to go back and rescue that poster, so uh, we're just gonna leave it back there. While we're out here though, I am still at four mows for the season, and it has finally stopped raining, and I haven't had to mow for like two weeks now. And as long as this hot and dry weather keeps up, my dream of eight mows in a season, it's still alive, it's still alive. So on the Zelda front, I finished the game, my favorite final boss in the whole series. Just magnificent, so good. And the lead up to it, just they played to the strengths and uniqueness of this game. And I loved it, it was fantastic. There's that saying that expectation is the thief of joy. And that was certainly the case for me in Breath of the Wild. I wanted a traditional Zelda with dungeons, and all of these iconic themes playing over the background, and I didn't get any of that. But coming into Tears of the Kingdom, I knew that that was most likely going to be the case, so I was able to appreciate this game much more for what it is rather than what I wanted it to be. And what it is is this fantastic game of exploration and just new discoveries to be found around every corner and puzzles that aren't exactly the most satisfying but let you flex your creativity. And it's all about how will you solve this, not how, what is the prescribed way to solve it. And for me, I love those prescribed ways of solving puzzles. I like linear games. I like having a set path that somebody has very carefully crafted for me. It's kind of the reason why I'm not that into roguelike games. I don't want randomized stuff. I want something that somebody really thought about and gave me like a, very clear vision. That being said, this game did a great job of giving me the other style of puzzle where it's all about what I come up with. So my total playtime was 80 hours or more, which is definitely more than I played Breath of the Wild. But I'm really glad that I finished it because I felt like I was taken hostage by this game and I just felt so compelled to play it. I enjoyed it the whole time, but it's it was so compelling you couldn't stop. So I'm glad I've seen the end. I can take a break for a while. So the front runners for game of the year right now, Tears of the Kingdom and Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line. I'm gonna have to wait till the end of the year to see how I feel about both of them because I loved both of them. There's no way that I could pick a winner right now. 
Though Zelda's kind of the obvious choice, but final bar line, there's more DLC coming out. I'm gonna play that for the rest of the year. The Nintendo Switch though, wow, what a dark horse coming out of nowhere to suddenly become my main console. My Xbox, I've hardly touched it. PlayStation 5, the only game I played on it was Octopath Traveler 2 because I wanted that 60 frames per second, but now I kind of wish I had it on Switch instead because I would much prefer the portability of this system. The OLED Switch, I'm telling you, breathed new life into this system for me. What I want out of a Switch 2 is not 4K graphics. I just want 720p 60 portable, 1080p 60 docked. I'll be super happy. Don't, they don't need to do anything else. Just use all the extra horsepower for frame rate. Don't worry about resolution. Come on, man. So I think that's gonna do it for today's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Getting older, it's not so much that I can't deal with a lack of sleep. It's that I'm less willing to deal with it. When I was younger, you could just be so tired. You're at school, you're like, oh God, I wish I were asleep. And then you just power through it anyway. Just like thinking back on it, chronically, just chronically not enough sleep when I was in school. And now as an adult where I can get enough sleep the majority of the time, it's just like, I'm like, I can't deal with this anymore. And every time I stay up too late, I'm like, why do I do this to myself? Anyways, like I said, thanks for watching the vlog. Hope you have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.